Greetings, everybody. Get your King James Bible. Turn to the book of Isaiah. We're going to do chapter 46, the commentary. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Now, remember something. The future prophecy was always foreshadowed by the things that happened in the Old Testament. For example, in the plagues of Egypt, when Moses was under the Lord's direction, was confronting Pharaoh to let his people go. You had the plague of locusts and frogs and flies, uh, hail mingled with fire, uh, and some of those things are kind of a, they were a foreshadow of the plagues of Revelation in the tribulation period. And things really, you know, Satan has a plan, and God's letting him do it. A lot of people don't realize it, but this is a test. Before the Lord bestows upon someone eternal life, the gift of eternal life, he's going to make you prove to yourself that you are going to follow the Lord and that you're, you know, that you're going to follow him. I mean, let's face it, uh, God's anointed angel became the devil satan and he's going to give you a choice you can follow the lord or you can follow the devil or yourself you could be your own god make your own decisions but uh, you can not cry about your uh, ultimate destination when you do so so basically this is a test and People have a choice, and the Lord warns those of the wrong choice. This is his world, and he can wreck it if he wants. And this earth is going to pass away. So, without further ado, let's read Isaiah 46. Bell bowed down. Bell was the name of a false god. Nebo stooped. Their idols were upon the beasts and upon the cattle. Your carriages were heavy loaden. They are a burden to the weary beast. They stoop. They bow down together. They could not deliver the burden, but they themselves are gone into captivity. Hearken unto me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, which are born by me from the belly, which are carried from the womb. All right, Isaiah 46 and verse 4. And even to your old age I am he, and even to whore hairs will I carry you, I have made, and I will bear, even I will carry, and will deliver you. Let's face it, the Lord carries us. You know, we don't do this by our own selves. If the Lord didn't have our angels protecting us, Satan's angels would probably kill us all out of hand with no regrets at all. Verse 5. To whom will ye liken me, and make me equal, and compare me, that we may be like? And the answer is, no one. <laughs> so, verse 6. They lavish gold out of a bag, and weigh silver in the balance, and hire a goldsmith, and he maketh it a god. Hmm. They lavish gold out of a bag and waste silver in the balance and hire a goldsmith, and he maketh it a god. They fall down, yea, they worship. 
They bear him upon the shoulder, they carry him and set him in his place, and he standeth from his place, shall he not remove, yea, one shall cry unto him, yet can he not answer, nor save him out of his trouble. That's right, that golden image is not going to save you. Verse 8. Remember this and show yourselves, men, bring it again to mind, O ye transgressors. Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there, there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning. Oh yeah, read Genesis 3.15. The promised Savior was even foretold back then. Even, even in the beginning when sin first came to the earth. The Bible even says that uh, Jesus was the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. From the beginning of the world, Christ was made to die for our sins, knowing full well that mankind would fall. Verse 10, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Calling a ravenous bird from the east, the man that executeth my counsel from a far country, yea, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it. I will also do it. Hearken unto me, ye stout-hearted, that are far from righteousness. I bring near my righteousness. It shall not be far off, and my salvation will I not tarry. And I will place salvation in Zion for Israel my glory. Now, in before when the Lord said in verse 6, he says, they lavish gold out of a bag and weigh silver in the balance and hire a goldsmith and he maketh it a god. They fall down, yea, they worship. They worship the works of men's hands. Now, in the Greek, you have the word icon, which is where they come up with the word image. And that's what, you know, that's what Windows does. You know, it's an icon. Uh, you got a picture of a printer. And when you want to take a document, you take the document and put it over by the printer or on top of the printer and click on it or whatever. And the document prints. Well, that's what an icon is. But it, image and idols, um, and well, how do I put this? An idol is an image, but an image is not always an idol. It can be, but not always. And that's what an idol is. Uh, an idol is it's you know you're worshiping an object an 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 image so in luke chapter 20 around luke 20 and verse 20 uh, the jews were trying to trick jesus saying should we pay taxes to caesar but then in verse 24, Luke 20, 24, Jesus said, show me an image. I'm sorry. He said, show me a penny. And he said, whose image and superscription hath it? And they answered and said, Caesar's. And what did Jesus say? Render the Caesar the things that are Caesar's and the things that belong to God. Render the God. And I'm paraphrasing, but you know. So let's do a quick study on images. In Romans 1.23, we read, And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. 
In Romans 8.29, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn of many brethren. See, God the Father wants us to be conformed to the image of his Son. So, in 2 Corinthians 4, 4, we read, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. In John chapter 14 and verse 7, Jesus said, If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth, sufficeth us. Jesus said, saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Showest the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Colossians 1.15 Speaking of Jesus, who is the image, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? Now remember, Satan has a game plan. And you know, as long as you're winning games. You're not going to change your game plan. As long as it works, you know, what do they say? If it's if it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. There you go. Revelation 13, verse 12. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them that dwell therein to worship, worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Uh, this is mimicking what uh, Elijah did. These are that's exactly what like what Elijah did. Matter of fact, my the Bob theory is that the false prophet will call himself Elijah. That's because in uh, people know that Elijah is going to come. And I think the uh, two witnesses that confront the false prophet, well, it's going to be Elijah, the real Elijah, confronting the false Elijah. But we'll see. Verse 14, And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beasts, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image, that they should make an image, an idol, right? That they should make an image to the beast, which had the so uh, wound by a sword, and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Well, guess what? It wouldn't surprise me if television's the image of the beast. Wouldn't surprise me. I'm not saying it is. I don't claim to be a prophet. What do I know? I'm just some guy that reads the Bible uh, a couple of times. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 9 and the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice if any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or 
in his hand. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. So the uh, wine of the wrath of God is going to be poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Oh yeah. Verse 9, uh, Revelation chapter 19 and verse 20. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, which with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. And them that worshipped his image, these both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. Revelation 20 and verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast. So, John saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon uh, their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. And that people is only the introduction. So, you know, Satan wanted people to worship images back in the Old Testament. Well, guess what? It's going to happen. Same thing in the New Testament in the end times. The Lord declares the end from the beginning. You know, and there's actually people that uh, call themselves preterists, and they teach that all this has come to pass. They claim that all this happened in 70 AD, and they claim that this is this present evil, wicked world is Christ's kingdom. And when you start pointing out these things, they'll just kind of explain it away and then tell you well you just don't understand uh okay i don't understand yeah you're right i don't understand but um you know i mean there is partial preterism a lot of matthew 24 was fulfilled in 70 a.d but when some idiot tells me that the book of Revelation was completely fulfilled in 70 AD, just know that you're dealing with somebody that's either extremely deceived, that God has blinded their eyes, or they are a full-blown satanic deceiver. My suggestion is run away. But then again, dispensational theology that the Baptists are currently spouting, that's wrong. Um, and to say that everything is future is wrong, too. I mean, some of this is fulfilled in the past, and some of it's fulfilled in the future. Some of what John was writing in the book of Revelation was happening in the present day that he was alive. But uh, preterists will uh, always try to make you think that the book of Revelation was uh, created prior to 70 AD and I'm not so sure that's true John I believe John was an old man and uh, I believe book of Revelation was penned after 70 AD but you know there's people that argue and I don't claim to be a scholar I don't claim to be a prophet so all right people all blessings, praise, 
glory and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.